Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Acids, the bite of the potion, the fuming heart of the elixir, that magic stuff that brings cold burns, explosions, and transformation. Acid, the fascination of the chemist and the alchemist. Where is the acid that can dissolve anything? What's the most powerfully acidic substance on Earth? Where's the xenomorph blood from aliens? Does something like that actually exist? Turns out, yes. There are some seriously corrosive acids out there. Bases, too. We'll do a super basic episode soon. This week, it's all about super acids. There are acids out there that can dissolve flesh, bone, plastic, gold, platinum, and even glass. A super acid is just what it sounds like, an extremely powerful, next-level acid. Think of what ordinary acids do, cause nasty burns or explosive reactions, and now multiply that effect by a hundred, a thousand, a million, and even way more than that. A super acid strength is defined by how many more times powerful it is than sulfuric acid, generally considered a pretty badass acid all by itself. Sulfuric acid is the bottom level baseline for discussing the power of these substances. Before we get into the super acids, let's stop and think about what it means for a substance to be an acid, to be acidic. Acidity is defined by how a substance interacts with the surrounding world, how it changes the other substances around. Acids tend to donate positively charged protons to other chemicals or generate positive charges in other materials by grabbing their electrons. So acids tend to bring positive charges along the way. Bases do a similar thing, just with the opposite, negative charge. That's why bases can be quite corrosive and great at dissolving things too. Acids bring protons and positive charge, but how does that dissolve things? How does that make an acid an acid? How does an acid chew things up? How does the process work? Creating the charge on a substance is just the first step. Once the acid delivers the positively charged proton, the material becomes vulnerable to being dissolved by water. Water just loves to break apart electrically charged bonds. Acid and water usually work together in this way. Acids are fundamental chemical building blocks across a wide variety of important commercial products. Sulfuric acid is the most widely used acid in industry produced at one of the highest volumes of any chemical. It's mainly used in producing fertilizer, but also in detergent, batteries, and dyes. If you get rid of all the water from sulfuric acid, you end up with something called oleum. This is an anhydrous acid, meaning the water has been totally removed. Oleum can be thought of as the essence of sulfuric acid. Nitric acid, HNO3, also known as aqua fortis, Latin for strong water, and also known as spirit of nitre, is the one used in most acid attacks. There are only seven strong acids. The strong acids and bases are simply those that completely dissociate in water, the ones that yield the maximum number of positive protons. These include nitric acid, chloric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydroiotic acid, hydrobromic acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. These are called strong acids, and they are strong, but there's more to it. Being part of the list of strong acids doesn't give any indication of how dangerous or damaging an acid actually is. Chemicals, like many things in nature, are more than the sum of their parts. The most powerful acids, the true super acids, are actually combinations of two or more conventional acids two separate chemicals working together to disassemble at the atomic scale. The first super acid or combo I ever worked with in the lab was aqua regia, from Latin meaning regal water or royal water. This is a mixture of hydrochloric acid and nitric acid, optimally in a molar ratio of about three to one. Aqua regia is a yellow orange, sometimes reddish, fuming liquid. And it was named by alchemists because it can dissolve the noble metals gold and platinum. Aqua regia dissolves these supposedly adamantine materials when neither constituent acid could do so alone. 
even after waiting a thousand years. Aqua Regia is primarily used to produce the highest quality gold with 99.999% purity. Another interesting, super corrosive combo you'll encounter in a chemistry lab, the tastefully titled Piranha Solution. This mixture of sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide disassembles pretty much any organic molecule in its path. It's great at dissolving flesh. But today, this acid finds its main use in the electronics industry. On TV and in the movies, you'll see other acids in caustic bases used to dispose of human bodies. But those in the know say, if you want to do the job right, large organic masses are better dissolved with piranha solution. Weak acids, in contrast to strong acids like nitric and sulfuric acid, dissociate only a small amount. These acids only give up a few of their protons, generally. These acids are referred to as weak, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Some weak acids are very strong, dangerous, and reactive. An acid's corrosiveness is a measure of how damaging it is to surfaces, such as metal or the skin. An acid can be strong, but fairly safe to handle if it has a low corrosivity. But weak acids can be highly corrosive and extremely dangerous to work with. A certain weak acid also happens to be the most dangerous and toxic of them all, the one feared and respected by chemists. This same weak acid is also a core component of many super acids. Hydrofluoric acid, or HF, is an interesting case. This is the one where you're trained to wear two sets of latex gloves to handle it. Hydrofluoric acid is technically classified as a weak acid. However, hydrofluoric acid, or HF, is extremely powerful. It's a corrosive acid. It's one of the most dangerous chemicals you can handle in the lab. Yes, it's a weak acid, but the story is far more complicated with HF. Unlike other hydrohalic acids, such as hydrochloric acid, hydrogen fluoride is only weak in dilute solution. At high concentrations with large amounts of acid, the solution becomes much stronger, more toxic, corrosive, reactive, and dangerous. In the film Saw 6, hydrofluoric acid is used to kill William Easton. Two films later, in Jigsaw, Carly is killed by hydrofluoric acid injected into her bloodstream. Ooh. In an episode of Breaking Bad, titled Cats in the Bag, Jesse Pinkman uses HF to dissolve Emilio's body. In another episode, Box Cutter, Walter and Jesse use hydrofluoric acid to dissolve Victor's body. In my humble opinion, they should have gone with Piranha Solution. In season four, episode 20 of ER, one of my favorite old shows, a patient gets exposed to a large amount of hydrofluoric acid. It burns his skin and eventually kills him. There's nothing Dr. Doug Ross or the ER team could do. It's kind of a scary episode about what chemicals can do to the body. Initial treatment for exposure to HF involves removing contaminated clothing and washing the affected area with large amounts of water. Calcium gluconate cream is then usually applied. The calcium gluconate is a source of calcium ions that lock down the toxic fluoride ions. Calcium gluconate can also be injected into the affected area in more serious cases. Surgical removal of the affected tissue may sometimes be required. What's deadly? can also be beautiful. This is the essence of hydrofluoric acid, the anhydrous form. HF makes pretty purple crystals. Traditionally, in the most powerful super acids, the secret ingredient is this weak acid, hydrofluoric acid. Super acids make use of a cooperative effect with this deadly oddball. Common, conventional acids are defined by their pH value. The stronger the acid, the higher its proton concentration, the lower the pH. However, pH values cannot define all acids. Super acids have pH values that are far below the standard range, and they tend to have a violent reaction with water. These super acids cannot be safely measured by pH. To create some form of standardization for these solutions, chemists created a new measurement, the Hammett acidity function. H0. The Hammett acidity function uses sulfuric acid as its baseline. 
Defining a super acid as a substance with acidity greater than 100% pure sulfuric acid. Given that sulfuric acid is exceptionally corrosive, you can imagine that anything stronger would be extremely powerful and dangerous. Just as an example, the super acids triflic acid and fluorosulfuric acid are both about 1,000 times stronger than pure sulfuric acid. Here are the Hammett acidity values for several super acids. Increased acidity is indicated by smaller, in this case more negative values of H0. Starting at the weakest, sulfuric acid has an H0 of around minus 12. Perchloric acid has an H0 of around minus 13. Triflic acid has an H0 of around minus 15. Fluoroboric acid has an H0 of around minus 16.6. And now we're getting to the top of the list. Another powerful acid, dubbed magic acid, is a mix of antimony pentafluoride and fluorosulfonic acid. Magic acid has an H0 value of minus 20. This acid is so potent that it even reacts with inert hydrocarbons found in wax candles. As wax is such a stable compound, it is an impressive accomplishment to initiate a reaction with it let alone completely dissolve it. Magic acid is actually the official name for this substance, and there's an interesting story for how it found this unique designation. The story goes, the researchers who discovered this dissolving wax phenomenon thought they had been fooled by some kind of magic trick. They had thought dissolving something as inert as wax with acid was impossible. Wax is actually way harder to dissolve than glass, if you can believe it and the most powerful acid of them all, fluoroantimonic acid with a Hammett acidity around minus 23. Fluoroantimonic acid is made by combining hydrofluoric acid with antimony pentafluoride, resulting in an acid that is 10 to the 16, or 10 million billion times stronger than sulfuric acid. This acid is so strong that it has to be stored in special containers. These super acids make it possible to perform chemistry that used to be impossible. The petrochemical industry uses super acids as catalysts to produce high octane gas fractions, while the polymer industry uses super acids in the production of next generation, high performance plastics. Even though super acids are extremely dangerous and have the potential to be a toxic environmental hazard, these solutions push the limits of organic chemistry with benefits just starting to be realized. Super acids are giving science new ways to manipulate matter, entirely new chemical reactions, new ways to put together chemical building blocks. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.